Apex Legends is dying. It's a nightmare. It's on life support. It's getting murdered. All of the titles of a lot of videos talking about Apex Legends and the downfall of the game. Obviously, we have to take this with a grain of salt, guys, because when somebody says the downfall of Apex Legends, what they're saying is going from active players of two to three to four to five million concurrent to maybe hundreds of thousands with still millions of players playing every single day. Apex Legends has been notorious is for not really amping up their social reach until something big happens, not really promoting themselves except a fun little map competition on Twitter or, you know, a fun little piece of art that they want to share and support for the local artists who like the game. They're notorious for kind of being behind the scenes, waiting a little bit longer than people think they should and not communicating as much. And I've honestly criticized that or given some radical candor saying that I appreciate the way that they're going about this. I think in this day and age, people will try to undercut you with promotions and, and bonuses events and, and free weekends if you do give your plans too much ahead of time to the public, but at a certain point you also do need to let people know what's up. And today, I want to talk about what they told us that might be the big difference that allows them to catch up to Fortnite. And yes, I'm serious, catch up to Fortnite. That's what a lot of people thought would happen, and now we actually have some confirmation that they may be going for it. Now before we get into it, I do want to say if you do enjoy this video, uh, leave a like and subscribe. That's the best way for me to know you guys enjoy what I'm doing. You want to see more of this content and you want to support the channel also leave a comment if you agree or at any point want to add something to the conversation i always look at those and i think it makes for a much more interesting video when there's a lot of discussion going on underneath it now, one of the biggest things that happened in Fortnite was that not only did they reach out to those earlier platforms and kind of grow through this uh, very, very interesting kind of path of getting Twitch streamers to kind of get invested into the game, reaching out to multiple platforms, being one of the only free-to-play battle royale games with such a, a high level of uh, just, I think, solubility, you know? It just mixed really easily with everything. There was no huge bugs, there were no huge errors, there were no huge uh, dramatic you know, issues that I think took people out of the environment and people said, wow, this game is free. And not only did they reach that initial audience, what they then did was expanded to mobile. Now it felt weird, it felt odd when you heard that Fortnite was expanding to mobile, but that's what gave them that huge boost. Going from 50 million players, which took them longer to do than Apex Legends actually, who did it in about a month, uh, Fortnite then was able to reach an even wider audience that Apex Legends could never touch by just being on PC, Xbox, and PS4 by going mobile to iPhones, to iPads, to iWatches. All right, no, not iWatch. I'm just, I'm just messing around. But these, new, this is technology though. This technology is coming at you. But the idea is that they, they allow for mobile gaming to be a part of the Fortnite universe, for people to play and have an experience of Fortnite even on the go with their friends. And this was big because at school you could then start playing Fortnite with your buddies. Or, or, or your friends after school, during breaks, during a free period, and you could continue the conversation, continue getting invested in the game, and continue showing off your skills or improving. Not only does this extremely help to keep retention high, but it also allows it to be much more casualized because your parents then ask, what are you playing on that phone? You have your phone with you all the time. Mobile gaming is how you reached people. I think hundreds of millions of people have downloaded PUBG Mobile, and that's what's actually kind of feeling like it's keeping that game alive alongside with its Asian uh, kind of player base when it released into China and I believe Korea. Don't quote me on that last one, but I know China is a huge boost uh, for the player base of PUBG. Now, what's so interesting is that Apex Legends, no mention of that, not on the Switch yet, has announced through a conference call that they are actually going to be working towards mobile. And this is this is the big key, right? This is what I think is going to allow them to not only make a resurgence, but become that kind of household name that Fortnite is. I mean, think about it. Everybody knows Fortnite. You ask a random person about, do you know video games? Uh, kind of. It's like, you heard of that Fortnite? Oh, Fortnite. Yeah, that's what my, you know, my nephew plays, you know, my, my niece plays, my son plays. All of those kind of colloquial uh, responses around that game uh, is really what represents the success it has had in the market, the pervasiveness and, and how much it's reached people all over. But you can't do that if you, you don't have people like parents running across it in their day-to-day -day interactions with their kids, saying, put down Fortnite on your phone, put it down on this. And, and honestly, EA is really playing on doing that by making Apex Legends something that's not just a 
great high level PC battle royale, but something that can be standardized and casualized for everyone to know its name. I think this is a really good strategy, but obviously there are a couple of uh, questions that come to mind. How can Apex Legends, such a kind of fast paced, more graphically demanding game, keep up on mobile? That's going to be a question that they have to answer. Uh, will older phones work? Will every phone work? Um, questions that I think players will be very interested to know. Also, uh, how much will this be able to copy Fortnite, or has Fortnite already taken over this market? See, for me, I always think competition's good. Like, you know, you have Netflix, but then you have Amazon Prime, and you have the Disney uh, streaming service coming out. It's not like people only will have one. To me, it's like, you know, you have Apple, you know, music, you have Spotify, the Drake album comes out on Apple Music, you'll buy Apple Music for that album, and then you'll maybe turn off your subscription, but it doesn't mean you might not have both. For me, I'm more of the, in the phase of, like, thinking that people will not just choose one or the other, but in our day and age, kind of say, I kind of want to have my cake and eat it too, and I don't think Fortnite and Apex Legends will clash. I think it would only mean like, well, now I'm done playing Fortnite, a little bored with that, boom, hop onto some Apex Legends with my buddies, or it depends on your friends group, right? Some friends will only play Apex, some will only play Fortnite, and you could be mobile with how you play and who you play with just like that. So it really helps to add things up a lot easier, especially if a buddy is wanting to play, but he's only got one PC, you could hop on your iPad. I mean, God knows, there's some crazy iPad Fortnite gamers, link up with him, and you you guys can duo queue while still hanging out for a Friday night or a Saturday afternoon, something like that. Pretty cool. Either way, I think this is pretty huge, and I think if they can actually pull this off, it will absolutely bring Apex into the conversation of the biggest game in the world. I think it's got the quality uh, of a game to be able to do that, but there's a couple of other things that should be noted here as to why this is so important. Now, Fortnite obviously kind of took the I think took the world by storm with how they developed into their own game. Battle Royale was trending, they had made this game which is more of a zombie survival game, they added this new Battle Royale beta mode, but it ended up being the mode that became Fortnite at the end of the day, the one that really we talk about when we say Fortnite as it caught fire and really implemented building which was something that who knew would be such a unique and fascinating feature in a Battle Royale that would define the game to date. Apex Legends is much more simple in that, but it, it's much more diverse in the way that it's simple, right? Because you have characters that allow you for different experiences, but you're not doing anything unique like building, you're just choosing a different character. They bring different abilities that allow you to impact the game, and the gunplay is probably the best gunplay I've seen uh, probably modern video games. I'm sure there are some Counter-Strike and Rainbow Six fans. Um, I can't speak a lot on Rainbow Six as of yet, but I do think that this is one of my favorite shooting experiences uh, that I've had in a first-person shooter. So they've got that going for them. Um, but one of the things to note is that 30% of Apex players are new to EA, which means that these players have never ever played an EA game before. Now, people say that this game is on, on life support or that, like I said, it's getting murdered. And a lot of those videos give into context that they support this game, but they feel like it should be going down a different path. And you could agree with that, and I agree with that slightly. Uh, but I think that what we've we've noticed in the lack of content is more of the step back to prepare a huge array of content for this game. When a game like a studio of Apex Legends reaches 30% more players to EA than ever, that is a huge opportunity. That'd be like opening up a boutique and 30% of new people start buying your products in a mall that have never ever searched for your products, seen your products, or come into the store before. That's a huge opportunity you want to take advantage of to try to keep those customers and retain them over time. That'd be a huge boon to your business. So it seems like they're really focusing on the best way to do it. Um, they're focused on delivering new content with long-term service and new legends, etc., which we've already known. We have the seasons. They promised better battle pass options. They promised uh, new legends with every season drop and a new change to the meta, which is most likely going to be a weapon or most likely going to be a significant change to how a gun functions, maybe even some hop-ups, which I'm really excited about. Um, and they also plan to release on more platforms and new markets. Now, this ties into the uh, current conversation around going to mobile, um, but I think it also could probably mean trying to get it onto the Nintendo Switch, and it also could try to mean getting it into China, and that is something that was confirmed in the conference call later on. They confirmed that they plan to bring Apex Legends to China and to mobile devices, expanding on the final bullet above. 
Now, one of the big things to note about China and about, you know, uh, the way Asia works a lot of the time with their gaming is that this it's not the way we think of it in America. Not everybody has those gaming systems or the big computer to play games in their homes. A lot of that activity is done on mobile. Some of the biggest games in the world in Asia, in China specifically, are actually mobile games because that's where everyone does it. If you want to meet up uh, with your friends and play on a PC, you'll most likely go to a gaming cafe or, or an internet cafe, so to speak, to do that. But a lot of times you are stuck and using your phone and that's how everyone does it. It's almost like how in America people have bigger cars than when you go to Europe, they're a lot smaller. It's just kind of the thing everyone does and the market kind of dictates that. So people selling to Europe make smaller cars, people selling to America make bigger ones. The market kind of supports that and it's a positive feedback cycle. It's the same thing with mobile. So with Apex Legends, two things they need to do is if they're going to China, they have to have this game ready for mobile because that's how it's really going to take over. As we mentioned, the hundreds of millions of downloads for PUBG on mobile, that's a huge boon. I mean, that's 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 more players than Apex Legends has had by double, you know what I mean? So just on mobile. So think of the impact it could have if Apex Legends could triple their player base that they've already gotten just by adding mobile to it. The amount of not only revenue that it would make in a game that already made five to ten times more money than they expected, but also just the impact it would have on getting this game to be more popular, more talked about, more in the casualization of society. As I always love to talk to you guys about what this means on the bigger picture as we've gotten through the details, let's let's spend a few seconds just discussing that, not in a long way, but let me give you this final point. The idea is that if you can casualize a game and put it into mainstream society, you can give that game a foothold that essentially can almost never be taken away. I like to look at Ninja and Fortnite as probably the best examples of that since gaming has been kind of upward trending towards main society and has often been seen as more of a niche kind of back end culture that, oh, you're a gamer kind of a thing it has kind of almost meant like, oh, you're kind of not in normal society, right? Back in the day. But now when you're a gamer, you're like, oh, you're twi you could even be making money from gaming. People start to understand that. And they use the term like, like Ninja, right? Like that Ninja guy, I've heard of that. And all of those things really help you to understand how when when you get that foothold, you know, Ninja not isn't the biggest streamer in the world right now, but his name, his brand, his foothold is the biggest in the world across the casual market. And that's who's really helping to swing the tide of your game. Um, you think about games that have been out for two to three years or four years and they're still going great. That's probably just the same committed fan base with a couple of influx of new people, but it's it's not the games that you're hearing about every day. The influx of casual players who are gamers, who are maybe on mobile devices or who will play because their friends play and won't really play unless their friends get into something, then they'll join through are really what I think does kind of like help create the buzz around the game where they go helps to see what that what's the hot game right because the people who love rainbow they're going to keep playing that people who love paladins they're going to keep playing that people who love smite or league whatever league maybe a little bit of an exception because it's so big it's kind of got that moba foothold are going to keep playing that and if you can get a game into the the realm of hey everyone's talking about it everyone's played it it's huge over here you see these numbers booming people are going to psychologically start to say oh apex is back apex is doing what we thought it would and it will be the game that's kind of talked about in association with the counterpart to the other biggest game in the world i've seen a lot of this happen before I came up in in, in, in in doing broadcasts and doing design during the Overwatch Paladins days, and in many ways, Paladins and Overwatch helped each other to establish footholds. And obviously, credit to all developers, Blizzard made a great game, I think Paladins is a great game, not saying anyone is better than the other, but I definitely think that they bounced off each other, and it's almost like, yeah, I know them because they're different shades of the same color, so to speak, right? And I think that's what Fortnite and Apex Legends could do if they, because they both have the potential to be widespread, uh, casualized, incredible, incredible games that people just love to play. And they can look at, oh, you want that Apex? Oh, you want that Fortnite? They're kind of two shades of the same game with great differences that allow you to like both of them. That's my thought and that's my update for today because I think a lot of people still wanna know what's up with Apex Legends, guys. And I wanna just give this kind of, you know, give the floor open to the plans. Now, I wanna leave it to you guys. Do you think Apex Legends coming to mobile is going to be the big difference? Do you think that 
what I'm saying it makes any sense? Do you, do you like this kind of conversational tone around more of the projected future and, and some possibilities with a little bit of concrete information? Um, if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below and leave your thoughts for sure because I think people are still curious, still questioning when's the next update. We do know that June EA Play will be getting in an update, but until then, we're still waiting and still enjoying the game that we have as of now. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did, and as always, remember to never give up, never stop gaming, and I'll see you all next time.